Hi, I'm Mike Sargent, and this is Arise on Screen. I am going to do something worth remembering. An illness forces CIA agent Evan Lake to retire. But when his sworn enemy is still at large, he goes rogue to defeat him. Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage and Anton Yelchin star in Dying of the Light. Colonialism is not a thinking machine nor body endowed with reasoning faculties. A new documentary examines Africa's most daring moments in its struggle for freedom from colonialism. Grammy winner Lauren Hill narrates the award-winning film Concerning Violence. Oh my God, what have I done? Academy Award winner Reese Witherspoon stars in the real-life story of Cheryl Strayed, a woman who goes on a three-month journey into the wilderness to overcome her addictions and find herself in Wild. All this and more on Arise On Screen. Hello, I'm Mike Sargent and welcome to Arise On Screen, your global home for films both on screen and behind the scenes. So let's get to it first with this week's box office winners. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 tops the box office this week, followed by Horrible Bosses 2, Interstellar, Penguins of Madagascar, and Big Hero 6 rounds it out in the number five spot. And in movie news... There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? The official trailer for Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, is out, and the controversy is already online. Seems like some fans aren't ready for an African-American stormtrooper. With the release of the trailer, the hashtag Black Stormtrooper was trending on Twitter when 22-year-old British actor John Baiega, playing the role, responded on Instagram to the overtly racist comments. All he had to say were these simple words. To whom it may concern, Get used to it. An online Grinch may have stolen Christmas from the new film Annie. Sony Films is waiting to see if there will be any box office damage to its Christmas season blockbuster remake of the foster girl named Annie, starring Quavajene Wallace, Jamie Foxx, and Cameron Diaz. The film was one of four movies that was illegally leaked online during a recent cyber attack. Before the hacking, the family-friendly film was projected to make close to $20 million during the holiday opening week. Weekend. Will the sun come out at the box office for Annie? Annie opens on December 19th. People have many addictions. Alcohol, money, power, and blood. Fans raised $1.4 million for Spike Lee to produce his first ever Kickstarter film, The Sweet Blood of Jesus. The film puts an unusual twist on love, sex, addiction, and bloodsuckers. Not vampires, but a main character, Dr. Hess Green, played by Stephen Tyrone Williams, a wealthy academic who is cursed with a thirst for blood. The film is a reinterpretation of the 1973 indie film Ganja and Hess and debuted at the American Black Film Festival in June. The film, The Sweet Blood of Jesus, opens Valentine's Day weekend 2015. And finally, the park is now open, and Jurassic World, the latest installment of the 22-year-old classic series, Jurassic Park, is back with a few changes. The epic adventure picks up 10 years after the death of creator John Hammond and features new dinosaurs and new characters. Guardians of the Galaxy's Chris Pratt is in the lead along with Bryce Dallas Howard to battle new and technologically improved dinosaurs. Jurassic World opens in June 2015. Evacuate the island. And in festival news, the film Letterbox is one of the films featured at this year's Mumbai Women's International Film Festival. The coming-of-age movie is one of several films spotlighted at the festival, featuring films about women, created by women both in front of and behind the cameras from start to finish. Female directors, producers, writers, editors, and cinematographers will spend eight days networking and screening more than 150 films. The festival runs from December 6th through December 13th in Mumbai, India. Today, I'm joined by author and film critic 
Rakia Mays, welcome, and the incomparable Julian Roman from MovieWeb.com. Hi, Mike. All right, but before we get to our reviews, we've all been reading about what happened to Sony with this mm. hacking. Hacks. Yes. And as a result of this hacking, and some of their films, especially Annie, have been released online. So my question I'm going to ask you first, Julian, do you think it's going to affect the box office? Of course, totally. I mean, it's been downloaded millions of times. A lot of people who have four or five kids who can't afford to take them to the movie I theater, I agree they can you. download it. And I on the street, you. you've got the DVDs now being able to be sold that are perfect copies of the movie. That's it will affect the box office. I How concur. can it not? No. Now, you disagree. I do disagree. Why? Listen, Annie is a film that I grew up on. You mm -hmm. know, So you've got little girls of all ages mm -hmm. that are grown up now, of all colors, that are moms that are going to take their kids no matter what to the theaters to see Annie. This movie is going to do you don't, okay. you don't have you bootleg mom money, friends, do you? you can no, I don't have any bootleg mom friends, really? but you, you know, right? bootleg mom <laughs> friends are—they tend to be in the hood. I'm well, talking about oh. nationwide, worldwide. <laughs> well, oh. well, all right. Well, I think <laughs> that it's going to affect it, and as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. From what I've been hearing, sources tell me that it was an inside job. What? Yeah. It was not the North Koreans? No, no? it was not the North Koreans. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> we'll be back in a little bit to talk more movies right here on Arise On Screen. <laughs> you ever think about quitting? Only once every two minutes or so. Well, I've quit a bunch of stuff. Academy Award winner Reese Witherspoon stars in the real-life story of Cheryl Strayed, a woman who goes on a three-month journey into the wilderness to overcome her addictions and find herself in Wild. Next, here on Arise On Screen. I have only another 300 miles left to walk. I'm desperate for it to be over. But I'm terrified, too. When I'm done, I'll only have two dimes to my name, but I'll have to start living. I'm nowhere near ready. Wild, starring Academy Award winner Reese Witherspoon as best-selling author Cheryl Strayed, tells the true story of her three-month hike where she set out to overcome her reckless years and hero addiction. At the world premiere, Reese said the role was a real departure for her. It was important for me to start making films that I felt like are the messages I want to put in the world. And this is such a movie about hope and love and learning to save yourself. And I think a lot of people are going to relate to it. Welcome back to Arise on Screen. So I have to say, this movie was a bit of a surprise for me because I really wasn't interested in seeing it. And when it began, I thought, okay, where are they going to go with this? Like, we know she's going to be better when it's done. But I have to say, I really enjoyed the film. Now, you, Rakia, you liked her performance, and you it moved you. Yeah, it did move me. I mean, this was a film that was about the relationships, also between mothers and daughters. You said it made you want to call your mom. It did make Profound. me want to call my mother. I did. Mm -hmm. It was about, we have these difficult temperamental relationships sometimes. And it's about this woman coming to terms and made me wonder, okay, if my mother passes, am I going to be guilty? What do I need to come to terms with? What do I need to deal with? And I think it was illustrated perfectly in this film. Yeah. You want to take a hike now? No, okay, no hikes. Okay. I'm good with that. Now, Julian, you <laughs> like this film. You think it's Oscar bait. It's Oscar bait. Oh, yeah. And it's a good film. It's very well done by Jean Vallée, the director of Dallas Buyers Club. This is his film as well, too. Beautifully shot. I mean, the mother-daughter thing with Laura Dern and Reese yes. is really, really well done. But, you know, this is Reese being like, I want another Oscar, I want another Oscar bad. Mm -hmm. But you gotta give her credit for a good performance and it's a good movie and it's really poetic in its own right, but it really is her just being like, okay, I'm no longer in Legally Blonde, I could really be gritty and make a gritty kind of film. Well, she's gone on since Legally Blonde. She won uh, an Oscar for uh, the movie about Johnny Cash. That's so. right. But she was playing glamorous, though. Yeah, she was I mean, playing glamorous. I mean, here she's pulling her toenails off. It's a this different is, kind of role, you This know? is true. It's well, I have to say, I agree. I thought the cinematography was great. It, it really gave all these great vistas of California. Shot. And and I didn't know about this trail that you could take. And it's a pretty interesting idea that it's something you could do alone, that That's there are right. people along the way. You leave your name in these books, and then, you know, all the people she met. And there are some really great moments, I thought, in there. There are. When, when there are people who help her, and when people she doesn't think will help her. Mm, yes. And also there is some tension in the woods where she meets up with this guy or these two guys who are hunters 
and you're not quite sure what's going to happen. Right. I mean, she's a, a woman backpacking by herself, so there is some sketchiness there, you know. So it's very bold that she's doing this, but she's she's trying to find herself, you yes. know. And that's really what the film is all about: finding yourself after this tragic loss of her mom, you know. Sure, and you know, it's based on a best-selling novel. I thought it was very interesting that the author, her name was not Strayed, but she changed her name because that's what she did in her marriage. I thought Straight. that was interesting as well. I thought that was very Absolutely. interesting. So she gave her name something to remind herself of what she had done. Well written to film. Her. A very so well written good. film. Good, good acting. Good so movie. next up is a documentary called The Barefoot Artist. It chronicles the life of Lily Ye, a Philly-based artist who committed herself to creating community-based art projects in some of the world's most troubled areas. What inspired me to come here to create? A uh, simple question, difficult to answer. Somehow it related to my father. He caused immense suffering when he abandoned. You know, I have to say, similar to the movie we just talked about, Wild, this is a movie about the human spirit and, and what you can do. And I found it very inspirational what Lily Ye is doing, that she's going to places like Rwanda and essentially doing art therapy. Yeah. And, and, and the way these people respond, just to have somebody actually care about this story, I found very moving. Now, you didn't know anything about her before this either. No, I had no idea who Lily A was, and I was really surprised by her story. Now, don't get me wrong, the art therapy thing, Africa thing, very interesting, but there's a whole other part of this film about her family and her father, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to ruin it for the audience, but it kind of unveils something that happened with her father, and it's a pretty interesting, like, parallel storyline to what's yes. happening with the art project. So, I was intrigued, I was. Now you you thought this film was interesting, but it didn't it didn't move you quite so much. I mean, here's my thing. I think any film that's about activism and someone that's working to make a change, I think it's educational and it should be played in schools, particularly. You know, particularly with what's going on in the world today, we want to see and document these stories of people that are making a change, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, but what's the but? <laughs> a, a butt in there. I thought it was I okay. I thought it was a little long at times. Um, I'm not a big favorite of documentaries, and uh, you know. I told you that as well. Mm. I see movies as escapism. I want to escape into another world, one that doesn't deal with reality. But so am I glad this was made? Okay. Yes, should it be in schools? Absolutely. Do I want to see a film and, and be educated when I'm watching it? Not really, no. Well, what about her escape. father thing, though? The thing with her father, do you, you weren't intrigued by that? I mean, I think it's always intriguing when somebody uses art to heal themselves. I think we as All artists, right. that said. is what we do. I think well so, said. too. I thought, as a matter of fact, I found her, what the, the methods she was using yes. and getting them to tell their stories in drawings. I mean, oh, it's yeah. universal. So you could look at it and then when they explain it, it was almost like watching a little kid. It's when a they parliament. tell these, these stories, they're like, oh, and this is that, and this is the blood, right. and this is that. The, all those things, I, th I, I found it very moving. Yes. So Now, would you recommend? What I, I would recommend it for schools, absolutely. And you'd recommend? Oh, definitely. It's an interesting story. I think so, too. I, I too, would recommend this movie even if you... Uh, you concur. Yeah, I can. I concur. <laughs> okay, and we'll be right back. When we return... NSA forwarded a hit on Benir. He's alive. Mohammed Benir, his dead Lake, has been for 22 years. Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage is Evan Lake, a veteran CIA operative who comes out of retirement to track down and battle his deadliest foe in Dying of the Light, next here on Arise On Screen.